Welcome to Soul Sisters. I'm so glad you're here. As you can see, we've made some new advancements here at P2, P Squared Productions. And um, so we're happy to be able to use this new stuff to be able to bring new ideas about Jesus to you in a different way and have some fun doing it. So it should be exciting. So we, and we're Advent. You saw that we went through some Advent, uh, more contemporary worship Advent songs. We had some, um, traditional songs in there too. We used some examples that were more contemporary. Uh, but so, but we're going to go back to the basics now. We're going to keep talking about music, but we're going to go back to the basics and talk about some hymns. Um, and so I think it's going to be a great thing for us to look back at these. I can tell you, honestly, I am not a hymn person. But as I've been studying and looking at these hymns, um, I'm really finding quite a bit of good stuff in there, right? <laughs> I guess is how you would phrase it. Um, lots of good information that we can use in our journey with the Lord. Um, so the first song that we're going to talk about is called Come Ye Sinners. Um, you will find a link. Well, no, never mind. You On the Facebook group, so you probably might need to look at the Facebook group if you want a, 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 a page that you can print off um, to use for your for your however you want to use it. I am going to use them as an art page and you know, I'm going to post my examples of the art pages on the Facebook group. So if you want to check that out, um, you can join it. It's called Soul Sisters um, and you can come join us and find out some different things. Our other devotion groups are all getting Facebook groups too. So if you watch one of those and you want to join one of those groups, you certainly can. So anyway, so we're going to start talking about Come Ye Sinners. Um, and it's a primarily a Baptist hymn. Um, but it's got some really good stuff in it. Um, so that's what the one we're going to talk about today. And the verse that it's going to have us look at is Luke chapter 5, verses 31 and 32. Jesus answered them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. So that's kind of the verses we're going to focus on. Um, there's also some other passages that would be great for you to read. If you look at the description, you'll see that it says additional readings, or you can find that on the Facebook group, too. Um, so, I don't like to go to the doctor. Um, it seems like I've been going a lot lately, but I really don't like to go. I would pretty much rather be anywhere else doing anything else, even, I don't know about eating liver. I was going to say eating liver, but I don't know about that. Maybe I'd rather be at the doctor. I don't know. That's a close call. <laughs> going to the doctor and eating liver. Um, but the reason I don't like to go to the doctor is I don't really like scared of them or anything. I've gotten to the point in my life where needles don't really affect me. But I feel like they always have bad news to tell me. I can't remember my last normal doctor's appointment. It seems like Tim goes in for a checkup and they're like, oh, you're all good. Um, no, mine are not like that. <laughs> it seems silly though, doesn't it? To be scared and not go out to go to a person who wants to take care of you. But if we think about it, we're like that with God too. Do we really want God to examine our hearts? It's like, you know, I don't know, my mom and my grandma used to always tell me that, you know, make sure you always put on clean underwear before you go to the emergency room. It's like, well, okay, the next time I get stabbed, I'll make sure to go put clean underwear on first before I go to the emergency room, you know. But, because you don't want to see, you don't want the doctor to see maybe your dirty parts or your where you're, you're not perfect or something. Um, so we're getting like that with God. We don't want him to see our dark spaces. Um, we don't want him to see that stuff we've got hidden inside. You know, and if he saw that, what would be worrying so is if he, if God saw what was really inside me, why would he want me to share his message? Sometimes we say, well, God, I want to share your message, but there's just a few things in my life I need to clean up first. I need to get everything just perfect. Um, but sisters, we are all sick with sin. Um, this is a disease that is spreads faster than COVID, right? We are born with it. 
and there is no uh, vaccine for it, right? Except who? Um, we'll talk about that in a second, right? We'll talk about what the vaccine is for sin. Every one of us is just drenched in this filth of the sin disease. We don't want that light, that Jesus light to be shined because the germs are just going to be everywhere, right? You're going to be able to see all those sins. We don't want God's light shined upon us. We definitely don't want to hold them out and offer them to the, the man who died for them, right? Who had to die on a cross because of them. No, we just want to keep them in our back pockets. But that's not what God wants us to do, is it? Jesus wants to heal us. Jesus is the vaccine or the great physician who applies the vaccine, right? He asks us to come. He begs us to come throughout the Bible. He knows he is the only one who can heal us. And we are filled with that guilt and shame until we know the physician will be happy with what he sees. We, that way we know, like when we go to the doctor, you know, we get up, we take our shower, we make sure we have the clean underwear on, we're all ready to go, you know, so they don't see anything out of place, right? But no, we know that the physician, the great physician doesn't care. He sees us in our sin and loves us anyway. And he passes that on to God the Father who can forgive us for anything because of Jesus Christ. Now, some of us may say, oh, you know, I've waited too long. I'm too far along in life. I've done too many bad things. There's no way that he could do anything about it. Well, the author of our hymn tells us that we should not wait another minute. If we look at verses 3 and 4 of our hymn, this is what it says. Let not conscience make you linger nor of fitness fondly dream. All the fitness he requireth is to feel your need of him. Come ye weary, heavy laden, lost and ruined by the fall. If you tarry till you're better, you will never come at all. Sisters, do you need Jesus? We all do, right? He is calling for you. Are you waiting to get better on your own, to get everything in perfect order? Don't. Go to him. In him you will not find judgment, but healing. And Lord, I pray for anyone out there who doesn't know you. If you need to message me and ask me questions and talk more, I'm always open to that. Please contact me. Um, I would love to talk to you. So let's pray. Father, we ask you to wait, take away our shame and guilt. Help us to realize you are calling out for us to come to you. You are the great physician and the only one who can heal our disease of sin. We are so thankful you are here to take away all the gunk we accumulate. Always keep us close to your heart. Amen. Well, sisters, I'm so glad you are here with me today, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye. Where's all my soul, sisters? Let me hear your flow, sisters. Hey, sister, go, sister, soul, sister, flow, sister. Oh.